um, it goes back to Bob Francis's, I think, most egregious policy to date, and that is for him to remove the tax-exempt status of churches that happen to disagree with him. We'll go ahead and look at that clip right now. This is from your LGBTQ plan, and here's what you write. This is a quote. Freedom of religion is a fundamental right, but it should not be used to discriminate. Do you think religious institutions uh, like colleges, churches, charities, should they lose their tax-exempt status if they oppose same-sex marriage? Yes. There can be no reward, no benefit, no tax break for anyone or inst any institution, any organization in America that denies the full human rights and the full civil rights of every single one of us. And so as president, we're going to make that a priority and we are going to stop those who are infringing upon the human rights of our fellow Americans. Congressman, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so there you have it. Bob Francis saying that, well, we have to remove the tax exempt status of any religious institution that just disagrees with the LGBTQ agenda, not goes out and brings some kind of injury to them, not go, not even goes out and speaks openly against them, just one that opposes them, even internally, their very existence must be persecuted. We must go after them. We must remove their tax exempt status. First of all, the premise is incredibly flawed. Because you heard what he said there is that there cannot be a gift or a tax break. This isn't a gift or a tax break. Tax exempt is the default, not the exception. When you're looking at churches, religious institutions, they probably never actually registered as a 501c. I don't know if my particular church ever did officially or not, but the point is, legally, that's always the standard that is applied. The default status of any religious organization, be it a church, a mosque, a, a synagogue, a Hindu temple, whatever it is, if it's religious, the default is it is treated as tax exempt. This isn't giving them a gift, to use Beto O'Rourke's terms. It is bringing a punishment that did not exist beforehand upon them. That's what it is. And so, first of all, he's, he's framing the question completely incorrectly. But secondly, if the government gets to tell any religious group what they're allowed to teach and what they're not allowed to teach, religious freedom is not a thing in this country. It's, it's one of those positions where you kind of have to be an absolutionist like free speech, because if there's even an incident of that not being applied, then you don't really have it. And by the way, I would be saying this, uh, I actually have said this to people on the right that have said, well, Muslims, they're just too dangerous. And what we have to do is we need to make sure that mosques aren't allowed. You remember that there was a mosque that was going to be built right here in the capital city. And there were people wrongly, and I called them out on it, saying that, well, we don't really need a mosque in, in Montgomery because Muslims are dangerous. Look, I think that Muslims actually are dangerous in many instances. I think that at its core, fundamentally, Islam is incompatible with the laws of this country. And I also believe that Islam is a dangerous theology. But that doesn't change the fact that they should still be allowed to practice. Freedom of religion means freedom of religion for everybody, including ideas that I really don't like. That's a religion that teaches that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, which, by the way, the Jews also teach. They're a lot closer to me religiously in, in several other instances and in, in several other ethical and moral quandaries. But the point is, they still don't affirm that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The same could be true of any other religion. They still should be able to practice. They still should have tax-exempt status. They should be on equal footing with all other religions, including the ones that I agree with. That's what religious freedom actually looks like. Not, oh, they're allowed to have freedom of religion, but we're going to fine them for it. That's literally Sharia law. Part of Sharia law is that you have the ability to either kill, forcibly convert, or uh, invoke a special tax on religions that are not Muslim or sufficiently Muslim enough. And so what Beta O'Rourke is actually suggesting 
is a reversal, but the same idea, the same principle that terrorists in the Middle East are advocating for. I'm not saying he's a terrorist in the Middle East, but understand what I'm saying there. He's saying we need to put out a special tax on people that disagree with us. At its core, that is what Bob Francis is saying. It's absolutely reprehensible, but that's who he is. And here's another thing. Point to me the gay person that is having their human rights violated by a church saying that what they're doing is sinful. They may not like it. They might be offended by it. They may wish that they didn't say it. But that person's human rights is not being violated. You're not dehumanizing them to suggest that they're sinning. In fact, only humans are capable of sin at least on earth. I mean, there are obviously other spiritual beings, devils and that kind of thing that are capable of sin. But if we're talking about on planet earth, the only creatures that walk this planet in a physical sense that are capable of sin are human beings. And so by suggesting that a person is sinning, you're actually humanizing them more. All of us sin. And an, a dog, a cat, a monkey, a giraffe, they can't engage in sin because they're animals. To suggest that what some something that somebody is doing is wrong, saying that they're dehumanizing them, no, actually, by admitting that they're capable of sin, they're actually humanizing them. And so the exact opposite is true. But ultimately, this is nothing but a bludgeon to try to coerce churches into doing what Bob Francis thinks is right. It's just conditional freedom that you're allowed to have religious liberty as long as it's religious liberty that we agree with. You're allowed to have religious liberty as long as you're teaching and indoctrinating people the way that we see fit. That ain't liberty. That's the opposite. That's tyranny. And it should be called out for exactly what it is. The whole point of this country's founding was that so mankind could worship his God in a way that he sees fit, that that relationship is between him and his maker, and not the government. Every other nation in history had an official church, an official religion, and whenever somebody, a ruler, the king of England, changed religions, everybody in that country, no, no, you're that religion now because you're a member of this country. America was done in the exact opposite way. We're staying out of it. You worship God how you see fit. Not our place to say. Bob Francis is attacking the very foundation of this country. The whole point was to be able to have the liberty to worship God in the way that y'all see that, that you that you do see fit. So remember that at the beginning of this, I said that Bob Francis is a perfect mirror into the psyche, into who the Democrat base really is. And I want to do a quick review of what we've learned. First of all, he is as bad as Andrew Johnson, and even though we didn't play the clip today, Beto O'Rourke has also said that he's as bad as Hitler. Uh, America is racist to the core. At its very foundation, it's racist. It was founded upon slavery, which is a complete lie, but that's what he said. Health care is a human right, and therefore the government ought to be paying for it. Police are going to be coming for your guns because you're not trustworthy with an AR-15. We have to take that away from you. And finally, let's penalize all of the churches that say things that we don't agree with. And that's not even going to his policy when it comes to the Green New Deal, any of those other things. That in and of itself is a violation of several of the amendments to the Bill of Rights, the amendments to the Constitution. If that is the case, if Bob Francis really is a reflection of the Democrat base, and I believe that he is, we have a party in this country that stands in open rebellion to everything this country was founded upon. They stand in open rebellion to the Bill of Rights. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.